Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom with our host, Bob Olson, who will now introduce today's show and speaker. Welcome to Why I Am Still Catholic with Dr. Rhonda Sherman. Are you a Catholic who is wavering about the faith? Are you a Catholic who has left off coming to church? Or are you a strong, practicing Catholic who knows people who are wavering or who have left the sacraments? This is the program for you. Listen to the interviews with Catholics who benefit greatly from the church in spite of some of the reasons others are wavering or have left. And now, here she is, Dr. Rhonda Sherman. Oh, greetings, listeners. Well, I'm very happy today to be interviewing a dear friend of mine, Deborah Shea. And Deborah Shea is, a, is studying for an MA in theology, but she is also um, runs the adult program for people entering the Catholic Church called the RCIA. And she will tell you about that. But I would like to have her on the program because she's a strong, strong evangelist, but also a wonderful, empathetic woman who runs groups for other women where they get to share their daily sorrows and crosses and their positive experiences with each other, which has been going on for many years. But before we talk about that, um, Debbie Shea, would you please tell us a a little bit about your conversion to the Catholic Church and what your childhood was like as a Baptist. Well, thank you, Rhonda. It's so wonderful to know you as well. And, um, yes, I was, um, I was brought up as a Southern Baptist. My parents uh, grew up in, in Bible Belt, Georgia. My dad was in the service, and we had a very small Protestant family, and we moved around a lot. And um, as we moved around, I kind of noticed, because when we'd move from one place to another, that, you know, uh, maybe the teaching wasn't exactly the same in each place we went. Um, but, you know, through my, through my Protestant life, I, I learned all about, you know, scripture and praying and singing. We learned how to tithe. Um, but one of the things I did learn was, you know, how to listen to Jesus deep in my heart. Um, and so, you know, as a Protestant, we we um, wait for God, for Jesus to call us before we're baptized, and so we listen for that voice. And so I even remember my baptism by immersion, and I remember my very, um, very disciplined Navy father um, who cried at my baptism. So uh, that was like the only time I ever saw him cry. So I knew it was something very, very special, you know, that it happened at that moment. But um, as I grew older and we moved around, I did have a best friend in high school who was Catholic. And she was um, a wonderful, loving person, um, but we didn't always, you know, talk about faith. In our high school, we just didn't, but I knew she was a wonderful person. And then I went to college, and I had another best friend who was Catholic, but she went to daily mass, and sometimes she would take me with her, but I had no clue what was going on. And then I met my now husband, who I was dating at the time, and he was Catholic, and he came from this big Irish, German, Catholic, clannish family. And he was raised in Catholic school. But when I asked him what he believed, he said, I'm not, I don't know how to explain it to you, but I, all I know is I'm always going to be Catholic. <laughs> so that really wasn't very helpful, although he was such a wonderful, warm, loving person that you, I wanted to be around him. So, um, you know, there was that dilemma of trying to figure out what it is he believed. And he was happy in his faith and and I was I was searching. I was kind of looking for for what is it that's the difference between us. And I really couldn't find very many answers. I mean, at the time I was in the 80s, and the and the catechism hasn't hadn't been written yet. And so I was really searching for answers. And one day I finally broke down crying, which you couldn't imagine anybody breaking down crying cause, about their faith, but I was because I just couldn't figure this out. And finally he took me to somebody at the University of Miami where we were near where we were going to school, and um, they were able to sit down with me and explain a few things. But then we graduated, and I came back here to Corpus Christi, Texas, where we, where we live, and, um, and I finally met a priest 
who who I I decided I was going to go talk to them at this program. It wasn't our CIA yet, and I just decided I was going to find out what he believed to kind of tell him why he was wrong. But um, that didn't really work out very well for me because I ended up becoming Catholic, and soon after we were married. So that's my story about how I became Catholic. But um, I really, I think the hook, line, and sinker when I began to to really study the faith was the Eucharist. I mean, once you decide that the Eucharist is really what the Church is teaching, I think there's nowhere else to go. Um, the Mass readings were amazing to me because I knew Scripture, um, but I had never put the Old Testament readings with the New Testament. So every time I went to Mass, I was like, wow, wow, I never put that together before. And um, so those kind of things, listening to the creed, I didn't, we had never had the creed in our church before. The creed to me was like, wow, there's everything right there, so well put, you know. So uh, the math really spoke to my heart as well, you know. Now, you certainly, that's a beautiful story, Debbie, and thank you, Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus, for bringing her into the church, the love of the teachings of the church and love of the Eucharist. Now, you've certainly known people who have left the church. And how do you, what do you, how do you explain that? I really, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Um, you know, I still have family that's Protestant. And, you know, we, we really try to, to build on our strengths together. And, and I'm hoping that they see through the, you know, the beauty of, of our I think the one thing that attracted me to Catholics was their sacrificial nature. They just seemed to be, um, uh, they, I don't know, my husband, one of the things about him I, I loved was that he was kind of out there warts and all. I mean, I think he was kind of um, very, not trying to be, come across as holy and perfect, but accepting of, of his faults, accepting of other people's faults, I felt like there was a great mercy, there was a great sacrificial nature. He loved to serve people. He was he was always very concerned about uh, um, the community and people in it and those who were less fortunate and things like that. So I think there was just something about that, you know, um, sacrificial nature. I, I really think it's, people don't, re- Catholics don't realize that it's really the Eucharist, you know, just being lived out in them that they don't even realize it's going unspoken almost. And so um, I think that's, I think that's the way we tracked most people back. Is then that's what attracted me most. What two Catholics were was something I couldn't even really put my finger on. <laughs> you know, it was just their really loving and sacrificial nature of them, and and not necessarily worried about you know their appearance so much, but more worried about meeting the needs of other people. And so, who so, say to people who seem to think that our non-Catholic Christians in their churches are more friendly? and that they know each other better, and that Catholics are kind of aloof. Well, um, you know, that is something that I did notice right away. Um, when I, because I, when I would go to church, nobody would talk to me. And so at first, you know, I think that took um, a fine-tuning of my understanding about, about the sacredness of being inside a Catholic church, the presence of Jesus, what we're there for, the focus being on Jesus, that everybody has a chance to pray in this consecrated space that's set aside for only worship. And, you know, it's just, it's so holy. I I don't think in the Protestant church there is an equivalent to what it is to be in a Catholic church. And so I think I had to learn that, the reverence and the the quietness and the, the ability to be in there and let, Everybody's trying to listen to Jesus, you know. And so when I went into my Protestant church, it was more like a social hall when I went in. And, you know, people were signaling for me to come over and talk, sit next to them and things like that. So the whole difference of being inside of a church. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe it was friendlier uh, inside the church, you know, to go sit down and, and chat with people. But it, at the same time, we didn't have the reverence in the church. There wasn't the presence of Jesus in the church. So um, I think there was a little trade-off. So uh, I think we, we hit it real well when we were at one church and they had the coffee and donuts afterwards, you know, where we go downstairs and then we do all our chatting and things like that. That helped, that helped us build the community. But it was something that I missed right away. 
And and I think, you know, that's what I try to bring into the RCIA program, too, is that welcoming. Um, oh, could you explain? Now, some of our listeners know what the RCIA is, and many don't. Okay. So uh, could you just explain, first of all, to find those initials? Yeah, that's the right of Christian initiation of adults, and so it's the way that the church, the preferred way that the church brings adults who want to receive their sacraments of initiation into the church. So where I go, um, the, the well, everywhere, the, the sacraments of initiation are baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. And so people coming through our program, um, some of them are, have been baptized in another Christian faith, and so we uh, are denomination. And so those are accepted there if they weren't baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But then we get people who have never been baptized. Someone just never, you know, they were they were brought up in an atheist family, or maybe they, I had one girl who was Muslim. I've had people who were Latter Day Saints, things like that. So those people will need to be baptized. And then I, I have others who have been baptized as a Catholic, but somehow the other sacraments of initiation got. Um, put off and never happened for them, and or maybe they circumstances in their family, death or a mother having to return to work, or things like that. Just those things got pushed by the wayside. So this is the way that they they get fully initiated into the church. It's a really beautiful program. Um, I I learned so much from watching them and watching the Holy Spirit work in them. It's uh, you know it's a it's a great joy for me. Yes, now. So uh, some people might think, oh, you know, suppose suppose the Holy Spirit zaps me and I get this feeling I want to be a Catholic. That's mm-hmm. scary. What would they actually do if they had that feeling? The first step would be to call, to Google maybe, to, to Google yeah. Catholic Church in the, in the name of their own city. Yes, yes. A lot, of people, a lot of people contact, like, our church because we're the cathedral for the, for the Diocese of Corpus Christi, and, like, um, we have our information on a website. Most churches have websites now, and they have a contact number, you know, about, and sometimes you can even go ahead and find the contact number on the website of the person running the RCIA program. But you, generally any parish office will be able to tell you. Some of the smaller churches maybe don't have an RCA program, but they usually refer to someone, a larger church nearby. So, um, you know, that's how... I want to just make the point, it's not a locked-in commitment such that if you even make that phone call, you have to become a Catholic. No, no. It's It's much more a way of listening, exploring, and being open to what the Holy Spirit wants for you so that you can see, well, of course, if I really believe that that's Jesus in the Eucharist, of course I want him to come inside me. You know, when you love someone, you want them right close to you. Yes, yes. And and um, so, and I was the perfect example of that because I, I really did go in, uh, not to an RCI program, but I went in to question the church with, you know, probably bad, bad uh, in, uh, intentions, you know, trying to figure out why my husband was, or my boyfriend at the time was wrong uh, in his faith. But, you know, the church, I, I'm very excited when people come with lots of questions because I'm very excited to tell them the church does have answers in a, in a beautiful way to hear this, you know. I mean, it really is good news. And so um, the thing that, you know, that when I heard first heard about the Eucharist, that, that I could be Jesus like that, um, I think that's, you know, uh, so it was so exciting to to think that I could be united in, in, in communion with Jesus in such a more powerful way um, than, than I had been before. And so I immediately thought, Wouldn't that, isn't that just like Jesus to leave himself for us, you know, to, to be able to do that. So I and and then even now when I when I receive communion I realize that I'm part of something that's been here for century for you know all of time since Jesus was since he instituted the Eucharist and and that every priest and all that is just I'm part of something so huge, you know, uh, uh I'm here, uh, the the church is much bigger than I thought it was as a Protestant. 
I well, I had, I had an experience once which was it stuck in my mind forever. Um, I'm a convert also to the Catholic Church. Um, some of you who have listened to these programs know that, so I came out of an atheist background. But um, I was in a setting where there were some priests and there were some um, women who were there who thought of the church as much too masculine and didn't think of it as, um, fair to women. And so uh, this, this woman said to the priest, um, what has the church ever done for me? And spontaneously I said, my father left me when I was a little girl and we were worried about food. We were worried about having enough to eat. And when I came into the Catholic Church, there were thousands of men called Father who had laid down their whole life in order to give me my celestial banquet oh, wow. of, of Jesus beautiful. in the Eucharist. And this woman cried when I said that. She oh, had, that is beautiful. She, she had lost the sense of that. You know, it's just yeah. incredible when you think that people will go without things that we consider very important that we don't want to live without, and that these priests will do without these, these uh, goods because they're so in love with Jesus that they just want to bring him to us in this special way, right. in the sacraments. Yes, and, and I point that out to my class, that you know a lot of people want to do, I think that's kind of the Protestant mentality I had was that it was, more Jesus and me, you know, and and as I became Catholic, this this universal sense that I belong to the family of hum, of God and humanity, and you know this union of that, and it was just overwhelming to me the the connectedness I felt to to everyone. It's it's very um, it, uh, you know it's very embracing, like you were saying, you know, it, it's very healing to be a part of all that. And and then, you know, I think, too, today's mentality is a lot of people, they want Jesus, but they don't want the church. And so, you know, when I go to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, I realize that that, that priest is there because the church has trained him and the bishop over him and the bishop before him and all the way back to the apostles. Like, like that Eucharist came to me, you know, through, through Jesus, I mean, through the church, I mean, through the ages. You know, and so it's it's just, I feel so connected. <laughs> you know, if, if people would just read the Bible, the New Testament with this in mind, I mean, when you read the New Testament, you always see Jesus with the apostles, with the disciples, sending yeah. out the apostles, saying, do this in memory of me, saying, if you forgive sins, they're forgiven. You don't see him taking people aside all alone and saying, have nothing to do with my followers. It's just between you and me. Right. <laughs> you, never, you never see those words, do you? No, no. And, it, and, and you know, it's, it's, as you do to, to this person, you do to me. I mean, it's, we're all so, so connected, you know. And so um, I think it really does make our neighbor our brother, you know, and our sister. So um, the you know, the thing that I like very much is I'm a philosophy teacher and a writer, and I could do things like soup kitchen, but it's not it's not what I would do best. I'm not a very good cook. <laughs> 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 so the idea that I can put money in the collection and in the same church someone will be doing the soup kitchen and someone yes. else will be taking in girls with problem pregnancies and right. you know that the church is such a large community that it can re the, the parish church can reach out to all these people and we, then we all participate in that yeah we all bring our gifts i think that was that was one of the most freeing things i i learned as a catholic was about charisms that we all have our own charism and that you know, if we, we give our gift, the thing that God made good in us, you know, and is our gift, if we just use those. And let, if there's something, like you said, like a soup kitchen that's, that's not your forte, 
there are other people that God's given that gift to. And so I didn't have to be, try to be everything. I didn't have to try to be Mother Teresa and St. Thomas Aquinas and, you know, all of the, <laughs> all of the saints at the one time. I, you know, I'm, I'm my own blend <laughs> of... Oh, of but actually, now, Debbie does different things that I don't do. For instance, okay, <laughs> she's a grandmother, she's a mother, she's... Um, and she raised a family, and she works in her husband's business now that her family has grown up, her immediate family. And she also bakes beautiful foods that she brings. So when she does a workshop, she has these beautiful baked goods that she made herself for the people who come. And uh, that's very sweet, too, even though you don't have to do everything. It's nice if you can do so many things. Yes. Well, I, I really, you know, again, that's, you know, to me... The baking is really sacramental. It's 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 like taking a part of yourself and doing something creative, and then giving it to someone else who's gonna you know enjoy it and eat it. It's, we it's a sharing of yourself to, with somebody else. I I really like the baking. It's just you know even as I'm doing it, I'm thinking about the people that that are gonna eat it when when and enjoy it and you know delight in it. You know so um, I think you know it's very it's very much like. I, I guess in a little way I'm mimicking you know, what, what God does for us in a sense by baking. <laughs> so these people who, who waver or who have left the church, somehow they haven't seen this whole thing, this, yeah. this whole vision that you've seen. Um, I know, and I, and I, you know, I, I thank God every day for that. I mean, because, you know, like I said, I have, I have Protestant family that I would, just love for them. I would love to share this joy with you know, um, but for some reason they you know they can't see it, and and that's you know I, the only thing I can do is be the most loving person I can be to them, you know, and try to attract them through love, and that's the only thing I I think you know uh, for especially for family, an intellectual argument probably isn't. So, although I I look for in, I look for windows of opportunity to gently suggest things, but um, I don't really try to head on argue. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right now, right now, you who are listening, if you left the church and you just happen to be listening to this program, we urge you to try it again. Try us again, <laughs> and just ask Jesus. You know, like, for instance, read the whole New Testament again and see if your Jesus is really the same as in the New Testament. Is the Jesus of the New Testament someone who said, you just go alone and pray and never talk to anyone else about the faith and never know any other followers of mine. Is that really the picture that you get from reading the New Testament of, the, of Jesus' will, you know? Yes. So, well, I noticed, too, you know, uh, when we were moving around a lot as, as a military family, it was kind of like we were, we were church shopping, you know, <laughs> to look to see where the next church we would go to would be. And... And, and in a sense, you know, looking back on it now, I kind of think we were kind of like being our own pope, you know. We were trying to say, okay, we think this is true and we think that, you know, we were when we were church shopping, we were basically, we had our own set of beliefs and we were trying to find a church that matched us. And so uh, rather than <laughs> as I came into the church and once I, once I understood the Eucharist and I had no other place to go, there were teachings that were challenging to me that I had to conform. I had to learn and stretch myself to be able to, to learn what the church was trying to show me. And so it was, a, it was an opposite uh, attitude that I had to have, that I had to become the learner not be the the authority looking for somebody to validate myself, but rather than be the person that is is looking at something that maybe maybe the church through all the centuries and its wisdom has something to lead me to, and so it was it was a different attitude <laughs> that I had to have. Well, a person who has a lot of questions but is feeling drawn back to the church, you can. You can just talk to the pastor. You can talk to the lay people at church. But you could also go to these different groups where people explain why the church teaches a certain thing. For instance, there are classes for couples 
where people explain why it's better not to contracept and yeah. how you can do a natural method that God devised in order to save your children yes. without, without destroying his gift of your fertility and things like that. The church has all these groups where you can learn why the church teaches a certain thing and can get involved in following the teaching with the help of others. You don't have to just say, well, I can't imagine not using contraceptives, so I can't be a Catholic. Right, right. And then uh, I think when we become more in tune to what God's plan is for us, then we can model our lives after that plan. And so it's not really just, you know, the church says this and we've got to follow it, you know, kind of not knowing. But it, I think it's, it's kind of trying to um, be in the mind of Christ in a sense, you know, being more like Christ. So, you know, especially like in the gift of, um, uh, of marriage, that we can totally give ourselves to each other like Christ on the cross. So we are being like Christ and more, you know, in being able to give ourselves totally to the other person and, and in a sense, dying for the other one. And so, you know, in that way, that was one of the things when I was first becoming Catholic and I learned about that, that marriage is a sacrament in no other, well, I didn't, you know, nowhere in my background was the church, it was marriage a sacrament, but or even, you know, considered that holy. So, um, and which explains a lot of divorce in, in well, ex- the acceptance of divorce in other, in other denominations. But, you know, that, that it's a total gift to each other um, is, is just something that is such a gift in marriage, to be able to come in with that mindset, that I'm giving myself to you like Christ gave himself <laughs> to the church. So... To have that kind of a marriage is is really beautiful. Amen. Yes, yes. So we only have a few minutes left. And um, would you like to say a prayer, Debbie, for listeners? Oh, sure. Um, I, uh, dear dear Jesus, um, I pray that you will... um, Touch the hearts of, of all the all of our listeners that they might come to know you and know the gift of your of your love for us, uh, your gift of yourself, and that it may touch the hearts of people so deeply that they want to make a return to you, um, and that they give themselves uh, back to you like you give yourselves to us. And that that gift, however, however it takes form, that they will be in search for that love that you gave to us. So I pray that they, that they deeply be touched by your, by your gift of your love and, and that, you will, that they will find you. And I think if they're searching very deeply for you, that, that they will find you in the Catholic Church. Thank you, Father God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, for the witness we have heard to the wonderful benefits of being a Catholic. We welcome all who have left us to come home. Oh, I'm sorry, listeners, for that static that came on. I'm going to repeat the prayer. Thank you, Father God, our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, for the witness we have heard to the wonderful benefits of being a Catholic. We welcome all who have left us to come home and all who are wavering to listen to our weekly programs where our guests tell you why I am still a Catholic. And there's also a series of booklets under that same title of why I am still a Catholic Uh, The beautifully illustrated booklets with 25 pages of people's life stories as Catholics and why they didn't leave when other people did leave. And you can find them on a different website, which is called Good Books Media, all lowercase, one word, little g, Good Books Media, and and it's Click on the link that says, Still Catholic. Amen. 
Hello? Hello? Bob, are you there? We have, we have a little difficulty where when he comes on, there's a static, so he's coming on and off. Uh, you, you hear the static now? Not now, but when you first came on, it, it, it told yeah, you. Yeah, I understand. Well, we'll be back again next week, same time, same station. And in the meantime, may God bless each and every one of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.